But good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. Those who are up, if you're watching the replay of this, happy whatever day that you're watching it. <laughs> this is Molly Cape. It's my cousin, but we're gonna we're gonna get started shortly. But I just wanted to to continue with our storytelling that we've been doing. And since we talked about soccer this week, I figured let me go ahead and just introduce him and have a little conversation with him. So we're gonna just go ahead and get started. And as people filter in, they will catch up with the conversation, but like with all conversations, open up with a quick prayer. So Molly, if you wanna pause, we're gonna do that real quick and then we'll get started. Father God, even now, we just thank you for another, another day. Thank you for another opportunity just to speak, to breathe, to do our daily activities. Help us not to take it for granted. Be with us with this informal conversation. This is a, a season of storytelling, of, of putting people on a platform um, just for people to get to know on a personal level, professional level, whatever level you have. So God, I thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right, let me get a sip of water and we'll get started. So first, I just want everyone to see my shirt. This is Liberian Independence Day weekend and I am representing for the culture. So uh, Molly has on his dress shirt, but later he will be representing um, where he is. But like I said, good morning. My name is Janet Cape with the Social Life Production. Um, I'm here with my cousin Molly Cape. And just a really quick story of our connection. Uh, Molly, you there? Yeah, I'm here. You How there? You okay. Whoever you doing? Them, tell them this is the interview. They're gonna have to, they're gonna have to chill out. <laughs> How you doing? You fine? <laughs> but, okay. Okay, but anyway, so um, thank you for um, making time for this quick conversation. Like I said, this is the week we're talking about soccer. And of course you are a soccer player. I'm saying of course, but some may not know that yet. So I figure it would be great to have a conversation to introduce you to um, everyone. But Molly, so he every year I'm meeting a new copy cousin. This is story time, storytelling, right? Because all, all of our lives, it seemed like there's a family member we're meeting every year, whether it's on our side or our mother's side. And so um, last month, randomly, I met him on the soccer field. So we had a Facebook Live conversation about the soccer team, right? The Charlotte soccer team, I interviewed two of the leaders. And with the leaders, they are empowering other leaders and empowering young men. So it's more than just playing soccer, it's a mentorship, it's a brotherhood. And so I was out there and after the soccer game, um, one of the leaders said, hey, I want, want to introduce you to somebody. And so I didn't, you know, I was like, okay, cool. He wanted me to meet him for, for the purposes of networking to help just kind of connect him with um, opportunities or whatever. So long story short, when I gave him my name and my contact information, him mean, meaning Molly, he started to laugh. I was like, what's funny? You, you want to network or not? <laughs> but then he was like, this is not your name. So pretty much he said, my name is Molly Cape. And I was like, what do you mean your name is Molly Cape? So long story short, he's my cousin, real cousins. And so I'm gonna let him talk a little bit about himself, but first we'll just kind of do a, a brief um, introduction. Uh, Molly, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Good, okay. You ready? So, so tell the people who you are, tell them your first and last name and where you're from. All right, my name is Molly Cape Jr. and um, I'm from Habiel, Liberia. Yep. And yeah, Molly Cape Jr. I'm from Habiel, Liberia. I grew up in Firestone. If you guys don't know what Habiel is, it's Firestone near um, Ralphie International Airport. So that's why I grew up and I'm a crew man from Grand Crew Conte. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> from Grand Crew Conte. And that, that's about it. Got you. And for those who may not be familiar with what he means by he's a crew man, that's that's the tribe in Liberia, crew tribe. So I represent the crew tribe as well. My dad, mom, Vasa, but we gotta you gotta rep the father side. That's that's how it goes. And so yeah. um, when it, what year did you come to America? So I, I came in America 2013. I came gotcha. here, yeah, 2013, that was the time I came here. Got you. And so all of the conversations we've been having this, this month, it's been a storytelling series about the culture, about coming to America and all of that. So I always ask this question because everybody has like a different spin on it. When, right. What was your coming to America experience? Meaning prior to coming to America, then once you did finally come, came over to America, what, how did you perceive America prior to coming and what was the reality when you, when you arrived? So, so my experience, my, my experience, my experience was really funny coming to America. It was really funny 
because the expectation that we have back home mm-hmm. that America, America, that milk and honey, I see you coming America, your whole. We have the we have this uh, so you come to America, your whole hustle rely, you worry about anything normal in your life. But then when I came here, it was just it, it was just like, dang, it's a new life, a new journey, a new experience for me. Cause I was I was 19 when I came here. I left my mom and my dad back home. I'm the, the only person that came here, I came here on a um on football trial. Mm-hmm. So I just left my family at the age of 19, came on a football trial, having different experience and plays the school, the weather is different for me. And you have to, you come in, come in from the library team, you come in, get plenty of money, but you have to look for your own set money, your own going, you can't even see your own going, and say, oh, your own going to work. <laughs> you better see your own going, your own going, your own going, your own you'll see that. It was just, and it made me to understand whenever you go back home, when you call people, mm-hmm. you call the people, you're like, oh, the man, I don't answer your call, man. When they hold it, that, that force me, force me, force me. He say it full of force me. But then when you come here, you better even see the person, you can't even see the person set around. Yeah. Yeah, you can't see the person around, and it was it was just different experience for me. But one of the funny experiences was watching coming to America the movie. Yeah, and the whole the whole time in coming to America, when Eddie Murphy, you know, they was working at McDonald's inside. Yeah, I always, I always wanted to eat burger. Every always wanted to eat burger. Never never ate burger in my whole life when I was in Liberia. So when I came <laughs> to America, the first thing I was thinking about is burger. I need to eat a burger. So I had a fat burger. A fat burger. Mm-hmm. And it was it was that was one of my best. Was it from a, was it from McDonald's? No, it was from this. It was from this um restaurant. Oh okay, but they didn't and, meet your. Ex- and I think I think actually no, actually it was from the first because they're having this McDonald's in in California, and it said it was the first McDonald's that that was made, the first McDonald's franchise. Oh. In, yeah, in Los Angeles was the first. Oh, that's where. That's where, the that's where I had my first burger. Gotcha. It was. About where I had a first burger. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so first McDonald's just... franchise, and I had my first yeah. burger. So you didn't have McDonald's like on Coming to America. You had McDonald's or whatever else, but you had a real a real franchise, not the made up one from the movie. But that's yeah. that's pretty cool. Usually that's how it is, and it, it's it's easier. Like even when people come to visit and go back home, then they have a better understanding um, because. You know, when you, you don't live in the country, you just don't know. So you assume family members no. are saying things that may not be accurate. So, but let's get to soccer slash football as it's referred to internationally. Um, we know that you love football slash soccer, however you, you refer to it. And like I said, we had a conversation with the, with the, with the soccer team, the local Charlotte team. And the reason right. why I will also say that you love the sport is because you know, I, I go out there sometimes just to support. You play professionally. You weren't out there playing. You were out there just to hang out. So you know, right. instead of in your spare time resting, you're, you know, hanging out with the guys. And so kind of talk about your love for soccer, like how it's how did it start in Liberia and how did it bring you to America? What opportunity it gave you? So so for me, football started very young. I, I can't even remember when I started playing. Mm-hmm. That's how crazy I I can't remember because I grew up playing football with my brothers and and I'm the last for my brothers in so every team my brothers in day in their life that's why I was following and everybody in the house was just playing football mm-hmm. nobody playing nobody playing the sport but football and and you know when I grew up in the neighborhood everybody played football nobody played different sport but football so yeah. it's like they say environment environment have impact on people so because because of my surrounding my environment where I grew up. I started developing the love and it did a lot for me. Graduated from, from college because of football. But mm-hmm. fast forward, before coming to America, yeah, I was when I graduated from school, I was I didn't have anything to do but to go back to school. Mm-hmm. And and one of my friends went professional in Labier. And I told my mom, I'm like, you know why? I had I was jealous, but the jealousy that I had for my friend, he was my best friend. And then Prince said, the jealous, the jealousy that I had for him, it wasn't a bad one. It was constructed. Well, right? So I was like, you know what? If you can do it, I can do it. Gotcha. So I literally told my, I told my mom, I'm like, mom, give me one year. When you give me one year, I see you give me one year. When I play good, I don't play no good football, I'll go back to school. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah, I told my mom, I'll go back to school. If I play good, I'll go back to school. Mm-hmm. So my mom said, all right, I'll let you do it. When I started playing and, and then I went on this, I went for practice and the guy came from America and he saw me playing and he, and he was joining his team to make his team to go in the league, in the, in the third division. Mm-hmm. And then he was joining the team to go in the league. And I, I just, I went there just to practice. Mm-hmm. And I, when I was leaving to go back 
So they had a game in Smyrna. They, they had a practice session in Smyrna. And I was going with Habel. So it was like 20 minute drive. So I was going back home in the night. And he, when I was working, he was like, where are you going? I said, I'm going home. I'm going to my house. He said, no, why are you staying here? I said, I'm, I'm part of your team. I said, Bobby, I'm part of your team. Said, okay, let me said, let me pause real quick, just for people who are not a, a, of the Liberian culture, because I understand everything, right. Saying, right? But I just want to make sure everyone's following. So you're pretty mm -hmm. much saying how you were um, going to like a, not a mentorship, but a group to play and kind of watch and follow, right? You right. I, was just going, I, was just, I was just going for practice. I was yeah, just practicing just, with them. Yeah. It was like, it was, I thought it was general practice, but his mm -hmm. team was like, he was collecting players to be part of the team. Yeah. So, exactly. so he asked me, he was like, he asked me, he was like, he was like, what are you doing? I said, Brabby, I'm part of your team. Brabby, me like, be brother. I was like, yeah. But Brabby, I'm part. Yeah, I thought I was super, like, super, like, super, like, you're already my life. Yeah. So I was like, Brabby, Brabby, I'm part of your team. He said, he said, but you can play on my team. I want you, you can play. I was like, all right. So I stood there. He was like, right, you know what? The guy got good leadership, baby. When he was playing on the field, I saw him play. He was like, how old are you? I called my age. I was like, yeah, I'm 18. Just got out of high school. He was like, all right, you know what? I will make you all the captain for the team. I'm like, mm -hmm. what? He was like, yeah. And then I thought he was playing the next day. He went to my mom. Somebody, I, they didn't show you my address, none of that. So he asked somebody to drive into my house, talking to my house. And he saw my mom on a Sunday morning. Me and my dad came from walking. And then when we went to the house, the guy was to the house. I was like, what are you doing here? He was like, I can't to sign you from your mom and your dad. And I, I would tell him, hey, I will help your son if he signed for me, if he played for my team. So I went on the team for free. My, they didn't take no money. My, no money because of because he went to my dad and my mom to talk to my dad and my mom that like he wanted me to play for him. Mm -hmm. My dad and my mom was like, hey, you're going to play for the guys for free. And I had a few games with him. And after that, the opportunity, God just blessed the guy to, to bring me up here. So and like I, I always here. talk about purpose. And what you're describing is that. Like purpose can be where you, of course, you make effort and you're striving and whether it works out or not, still aligns to your purpose, right? In your case, right. you're just being and doing and not even, I don't necessarily think looking at it as an opportunity to come to America, right? No, I did, yeah. I did not. And so purpose just found you and, and it chased you and it happened organically. And so when you, when you, when you, when you um, migrated to America to play soccer, Talk about the faith story with that. Because when the you think yeah. The faith story is it's me coming here, leaving my family and don't know what I was about to do. I was 19 years old. I didn't even know what I was doing. Never try don't never travel out of Africa because I went to Sierra Leone when I was young, but never travel out without my parents. Mm -hmm. And I was I was coming on a trial, but mm -hmm. don't know if I was gonna make it. That was the first one. I mm -hmm. didn't know if I was gonna make it. Mm -hmm. So when I came went on the trial and the good thing about it, I had it, I was gonna make it because the first practice I didn't do good. But the second third practice, I started praying and talked to my mommy and my mom used to talk on the phone all the time. And my father used to talk on the phone and pray all the time on the phone. Mm -hmm. And and it's led me. And every world in my journey is all about faith and all about it's all about hope and faith in God. I always had trust in God because because yeah. I'm more the person on the few that people underestimate. Yeah. But because of my faith and the trust that I have in God. Mm -hmm. I always overcome it. Absolutely. That's the message right there in everything. And I'm so glad you said that and put that out there because a lot of athletes, whether it's soccer, football, no matter what it is, it's like a hoop dream. <clears throat> and they're walking and not necessarily knowing the path, even if they're the best of players. So faith right. is definitely a big part of it that comes with it. So, um, you know, this is just a, you know, a quick touch based conversation is not a long interview like the others. So I'm just kind of going through a little bit, but let's talk about how soccer is more than a game. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little stuffy this morning. Um, let's talk about how um, soccer is more than a game. And so while you have a love for soccer, you also have a love for what soccer is doing for you, what is developing in you, you know, the platform that it's giving you. So, right. you know, in the past versus now versus the future, Talk about how soccer is more than a game for you as it relates to mentorship, business. Just, just talk about that a little bit. Yes. Football, like football is, is everything to me. It's everything to me because of what football has given me. Everything I've achieved in my life being here, mm -hmm. not, I'm not talking about being on the show. Even me meeting you as a cousin, me knowing you, mm -hmm. it was because of football. Yeah. So because it wasn't a football, I wasn't going to be, I was not going to be in North Carolina. I wasn't going to be on the field. 
So I can say football is the reason I'm even on the show right now. And football is the reason I'm um I'm in America. Football is the reason I, I had education. Football is the reason why I understand about nutrition and everything. So football have given me everything that I need in life. Like, and I cannot be ungrateful to it. Mm-hmm. So what I have I learned for football is what I want to implement to all the people. I want to I want to give back. <laughs> I want to get I want to give back by being um by helping people. It's not like if I'm saying happy people, it's not like, oh, I want to help the people that are coming from my neighborhood, coming from where I grew up. Like I want to help everybody. Yeah. I want to have I want to have everybody. I want to have people who who not even going through the same path as me. Because it's not, it's not only football education I'm going to give them. I giving them the leadership that I learned from football. It's not only about I have you have to kick the ball to run, make the type of run. No, it's about the leadership, mm-hmm. about the ton of the ton of sleep. How many hours I sleep in a day, the type of food that I put into my body, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So everything that I learned from football, I really want to help other people, the next generation, mm-hmm. the next the next generation, even older people, things like that. I really want to do that. So that's the reason why I I want to I want to open my own gym as a business person back home and being in America. I want to open my gym for people to be able to come and get get a body together. Yeah. get a mental the mental mind together because you know mental illness is one of the biggest things in the world but people really don't people really don't talk about it especially yep. as i actually, you go yep. to your mind say my trauma time i'll be like look out you try to be better go sit there you go do something you can't tell your mind thing that i said no african people know anything about mental health yeah they can't you go in africa you go to have a mental health but, but but as a football player it's one of the biggest things in life yeah your mental health because football is so fast when you're playing mm-hmm. and you think so quick in a little period of time. So if you're not focused, you cannot play. Yeah. So it's one it's one of the things that I learned from football and it's one of the things that I will want to give back to people. Mm-hmm. So that's why I want to open my own gym. I want to be a I want to open my gym back home an entrepreneur mm-hmm. and I'm doing I'm doing it right now. I'm a personal yeah. trainer. Yeah. And I'm um yeah I'm a soccer coach. I coach low kids and stuff like that. I'm, um, I help people with nutrition for the yeah. body. And yeah, I do all that stuff because of football. And yeah. I really want to do it in the next five to six, seven, eight, on two. Yeah, Whatever. of course. Whenever that opportunity comes and you can you can thrive in it. And like you said, you're doing doing it now, you're preparing yourself for it now. And you know, even you know, you talked about the mental health piece, because we talked about that in one of the conversations, um, a Liberian war story. Because whether you go through a war or, or just life itself, it's just very important. So I'm I'm glad to hear that that's a part of your your um, your platform, your 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 goals and, and your purpose. And so we're going to kind of wrap it up, but I cannot wrap it up without acknowledging what we're celebrating this weekend and what Monday is. And so whether you're in Liberia or whether you're here, you know, I can't assume everybody watching knows me, but I'm a first generation Liberian born and raised in America, but within the Liberian culture. So since I was a kid, July 26th is just as big, if not bigger than the 4th of July celebration here in America. And I look forward to it. And so I'm already dressed. So I have on my hat for the sun because we're going out to the park we'll be there all day. I'm in Charlotte. You're right now in Minnesota. Talk about just July 26th overall, but more specifically in Liberia and what it means, means to you. Yeah. So. So though the first thing the experience, the experience here and the experience back home is a two different thing. It's a two different thing. And because back home, back home the library is so little until you can see a lot of stuff in the city. Mm-hmm. A lot of the bigger thing is in the city. And the celebration is is so important. I don't know how all the people don't really celebrate July 26th. Yeah. Is that you? Like, like I like I told you, I'm like, it's like you having a birthday party. You having a birthday every, let's like say every every July 26th is a birthday, but you'd be like, oh, I can't, it's not my birthday. You literally deny your birthday because yeah. you're not a you are not a millionaire. You might, like, yeah. oh, you know what? See, I see I ain't got money, I'm millionaire. I celebrate my birthday. Yeah. You got other people can other people having the they having the notion to say, like, bro, all oh, that I like bro, all oh, that I like bro. Like bro, all the July twenty six, like bro, all that I just said, bro, you know, one breath. The wedding, like bro, can show what I said, like bro, oh no development. Yeah. So saying you owe to you getting you you owe you don't tell me, bro, you got money, you're not saying, bro, who's that breath that you declare exactly. breath there? Right. So so I I can tell everybody when when the twenty six come, 
that's the time you have to sit and re realize, like think and realize about the type of librarian you are. Where have where have you been as a librarian and where are you going as a librarian and what you want to do as a librarian? Because if like if you say library is not developing, what what about what is what is, what what is the, the, the impact that you're doing as a librarian? Because the country will never develop by itself. We develop a country. Exactly. We don't want to be able to develop a country. And when do July 26 come is the time of every librarian should be together, come as one. It's not only for 26, but I feel like it's the time that we have to start. Exactly. Like, you know what? This is the 26th time. We have to start and do something. And then we can do it. And then the next 26, the next 26. Because back home, back home, although all the people don't have any money back home, but when 26 is kind of different thing, everybody can be outside and be bought in a part of the time. Mm -hmm. And the, the AFL men can take that uniform and that old uniform and that ramp on the men can take it and then press it and see the men drain. The whole place can be lovely. Everybody enjoying 26 because mm -hmm. that was the day everybody knows. July 26th, yeah. Library Independent Day. A time for you to go enjoy and time for you to think about library. A time for you to know your history. Yeah. Time for you to go outside. Time for you to have fun. Yeah. So I advise everybody to go outside, have fun. Even if you're not let to be around library community, I know a lot of people. Be, I, I don't let to be around library community, but I advise you to go there and see how it looks. Absolutely, and and it's gonna, and, it's gonna be beautiful. Yeah, and one thing that I do and that I've always tried to do is bridge the gap, and so I always invite my American friends and friends from other cultures to come and celebrate with us, whether it's at the park or whether it's at my Liberian Independence Day dinner. Because again, right. we're talking about bridging the gap. We got to because we're connected and there's so much history there and there's more conversations coming because everybody does not know about the history or the connection, you know, right. between Liberia right. and America and the, and the importance of it and why we are so prideful as as Liberians, me as a Liberian American. So um, what do you, how are you going to, in last question, how are you going to celebrate today, this weekend on Monday on the actual holiday? What are your plans? So this week, this weekend, the first thing I just want to know, just from working out. That's the reason. Working so, out? Just from working out, I just went for a run. That's the reason I was a little bit late. Just came from working out. Just mm -hmm. got my whole yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he's definitely family because he he got an interview. He want to work out. That's me. He's trying to squeeze the workout in. But it's all right. Cool. I have to do I have to do I have to do everything. So just from working out, and then I'm about to go watch games on the field today. Yeah. And Stop yeah, tomorrow, yeah. tomorrow again, and tomorrow again, and having the IE and Barry game. IE and Barry game is the biggest rival ever in Latvia history. Yeah. The two always team. So about I'm about to go watch the I am Barry game on Sunday, but tonight we outside. Outside. And I'm sure you're not mentioning, but I'm sure you're doing somebody party. Oh, uh, we outside. Oh, take our dress off. Oh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Again, you gotta you gotta translate it. Everybody doesn't know, you know, what we're outside. No, okay. also, we also have the nail on our own. We're coming party from our outside. Okay. We're everywhere. Okay. What are you doing? What are you what are you doing? Uh, well, like I said, I'm already dressed for the park, um, Sugar Creek Park, since we were kids, the whole community right. gathers there. And so, right. school, unfortunately, they're not playing the soccer game, which is, you know, sad about it. But we have a lot, they have a lot of other activities planned and they have food. Y'all y'all gonna think I'm greedy, but African oh. food, specifically Liberian food, you gotta try it. Those who are not familiar with the culture. So I made sure- I'm eating I everything. Huh? I'm eating everything today. Everything, everything. everything. I'm drinking my juice and my my water, making sure I'm clear and ready to receive. <laughs> uh, today is independent day. Excuse me, I'm eating everything. Yeah, and, and we're talking our, about we're talking about have the next day. Yeah, next day. yeah, yeah. Of course, we can run. See, if you were in Charlotte, I said, "Come on, cuz, let's go run or or, yeah. or play soccer." Even though I don't know how to play. Um, <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? I don't know, lost my train of thought. Anyway, it must mean I didn't need to say it. But no. So before we end. Um, I forgot uh, the most important thing in reference to the game of soccer. Tell them about your team, where you play, um, and where you're stationed, and how can we watch your games? How can we follow you? So I play right now. I'm playing for Maryland Bobcats. The team is a professional team in Maryland, and the leader I play is the National Independent Soccer League. Mm -hmm. So the, yeah, it's the Cardiff League. It's, it's the third division league. Next to them, so it's the MNS, the USA Championship. And then the Nissan, which is the third division, the third level, higher level in America. Gotcha. And if you want, if you want to watch my game, you can watch my game on BN Sport. Um, yeah, most of most of BN Sport, BN Sport, most of our game, be, yeah, most of our game be on BN Sport. So you can watch our game on BN Sport. And yeah, just follow Maryland Boycott on Instagram, 
and follow me on on, on Instagram, Molly Carpet, or you can put Carpet Junior ninety four, Carpet Junior eleven. Put it on Instagram, and repeat yeah, on Facebook. Instagram, repeat your Instagram again. Go a little slower, Carpet. My Insta, if you are my Instagram is Carpet Junior eleven, Carpet Junior, and that's K A R P E A K A R P E A underscore eleven, K I P E S G I underscore eleven. Got just put it there. Just put it there. K A R P E H J R underscore eleven. Got you. All right. Carpet Junior underscore eleven is my Instagram name. On Facebook, just put Marty Carpet Junior. And um, yeah, I'm on Instagram and on Facebook. You can follow me and follow my team and watch the game. Gotcha. And you will love it because it's a beautiful game, and you will. Like, yeah, I'm I'm excited. It. Like um, I'm a football girl in that field. NFL football, but I'm also a soccer girl, but just not as much. But we grew up right. with soccer because my dad played, right? But now that I have a point of reference, he told me he was a he told me he was a goalkeeper. He yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. He said that he said I was a goalkeeper. He was, he was. Yeah. We have pictures of it. We would go out there every summer, every time when when the community comes together and just watch him play, not knowing what's going on, but just watching, waiting to see him block the ball. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. So, but thank you for your time. I know you know you have a lot going on. You have a lot to get in in a short period of time before you come back um, on the the East Coast. But you know we'll be following you. Of course, I'll be promoting your games, and we, I'm just looking forward to see what God is going to do in your life. Really, I am. So, but thank you for joining, and you know we'll be in touch. Yeah, thank you for hosting me too. I love you, cousin. No problem. All right, love you too. Bye. Right, take care. Bye, everyone. Bye.